everybody, welcome back to Humans of Springford. This is the feature that we're doing in lieu of our normal season of Discover Springford, where we're getting to sit down and talk with people who might not necessarily have a brick and mortar business in the Springford community, but are choosing either to, uh, to raise their family here or they're in contributing in some other fashion uh, in the Springford community. So my guest today is Russell Joy. I'm very excited that he's here uh, to share his, his backstory we were talking offline a little bit about how he said, I don't normally do this. I'm usually talking about other things, not about myself. So uh, it should be fun. Uh, Russell, thanks for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So do you prefer Russ or Russell? It doesn't matter. Okay. Either's fine. <laughs> that's all right. Most people at this point now call me Russ. It's like a very strange thing that's happened in the last few years. But Oh, okay. Was it I, Russell I growing was, up? Yeah, it was, always, yeah. it was always Russell. And my dad was always Russ. So, oh, okay. when, so when people would be like, oh, like in the last couple of years, people have been like, hey, Russ. I'm like, well, I look for my dad. I'm like, well, yeah. he's not. But uh, yeah. Are you in a junior officially or no? I'm not. So oh, my okay. parents decided, I love my parents tremendously, but they, <laughs> they really botched this. Uh, <laughs> we have, my dad and I have the same first name and same middle initial, but different middle name. Oh, really? And uh, yeah, and I, I don't know why, I, I, they, and I don't think they know why either. I think they just wanted something to be different, but I, it, it, uh, as a kid, it always, you know, you have that excitement when the mail comes and you would yeah. see your name, you get really excited and then realize it was for your dad. And then like in high school, the same kind of thing would happen, but then like something would be for me and he thought it was for him and he'd be opening my bank statement. I'm like, ah, oh, like rebellious <laughs> teen, like, what are you doing? Why are you looking? Yeah. But, uh, That's yeah, it was the only, it's the, yeah. Because uh, well, I used to work in banking and there was a, a situation where a son had the exact name of his father and he stole his identity. Uh, so he would he was stealing money from his dad's bank account, but he was presenting no! his identification and it was the same exact name on the account. And that, from that no. moment on, I was like, in, I think it might have been before I had any kids. I was like, I will never name a child after me because I can't oh, control man. their actions. Yeah, so. Wow. <laughs> I know. I wow. Like, that's some serious, serious issues there, but uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, that took a turn. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's interesting that my, my dad, his name is, uh, he, he's the first, he's actually the first of the Desiados that were born in America. He came over, his parents came over in 1959. Um, his name is Luca, uh, which I, uh, that's, is, that's my yeah, son's yeah, name. Yeah. That's your yeah. Son's name. I noticed that. I was like, yeah, he's, he's Luca. And then is, uh, he has like three middle names. It's uh, Cesare Gaetano is another one of his middle names. And then his confirmation okay. name is Patrick. Okay. <laughs> and then his last name is Desiato. So he has like five names. But my brother is named after him, quote unquote, but he's just Luke Patrick. So it's like the, okay. it's the American version of his name. Just they got rid of all the overtly Italian names and just made it Luke Patrick. So anyway. Well, I don't know if you ever looked this up, but like Pablo Picasso, have you ever looked at Pablo Picasso's full name? No. Pablo Diego Jose Francisco de Paula Juan Nepo Museano, Maria de los Remedios Cipriano de la Santísima Trinidad, Ruiz y Picasso. That's his oh name. Gosh. His full name. That's unbelievable. I'm not making that up. That's a real, that's a real thing. So, you know, three middle names seems like a lot. Can you imagine, like, just imagine being in elementary school and being like, okay, little Pablo, what's your name? And <laughs> thank God for him, there was no standardized testing at that point, right? I don't know how you... <laughs> right. I don't know. If, and they didn't, did they do middle initials and stuff? So he would have had like an, an entire last name as his middle name. <laughs> Just, and then another just fills in all the bubbles <laughs> yeah, just the right. whole way the whole way down <laughs> that's unbelievable i had no idea that his name was that yeah. long so um why don't we uh tell us the story of, of a young russell uh you can take us back to your upbringing and then we can uh transition into how you ended up in royers ford and the springport area sure um so i i grew up in uh, pottsville in the metropolis of uh <laughs> of schuylkill county Okay. And uh, the home of Yingling Beer and uh, the 1925 NFL champion Pottsville Maroons, uh, which have, uh, they were stripped of that title. Very, very tragic. A, a great <laughs> history, a great story for those uh, history aficionados. Now that everybody's on quarantine together, you can go back yeah. and look at the Pottsville Maroons. Uh, their old stadium was torn down. There's a little strip mall there, a nice little Italian restaurant, Palermo's, that I worked at in, uh, <laughs> in some of my high school and college years. Um, but yeah, there, there, Pottsville was like a very interesting place to grow up. Um, and I, uh, I, I left after high school, went to college at Westchester okay. and, uh, studied abroad while I was there, studied in Berlin 
Um, loved my time at Westchester, met my wife there, met many of my, my best friends for life. Uh, in college at Westchester, some of my my better friends from high school also went there. So it was just kind of like this the melding of uh, of worlds together. Yeah. And uh, after I graduated from there, I ended up going back up to Pottsville for uh, I guess about a year or so. Took a, a teaching job up there um, at the rival high school, Blue Mountain. Oh, uh, okay. Which was uh, that was that was a scandal. You're not allowed <laughs> sure. to. Uh, you can't you can't go to Pottsville and then go teach it at, at Blue Mountain. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of sacrilege in a sense, but That's I did funny. because they paid well. Yeah, right. And, uh, <laughs> and then uh, I ended up moving down to this area. Yeah. Uh, first lived in Phoenixville until it got really expensive. Right. And uh, it was like the uh, that kind of moment where you have the realization that you might like where you live, but uh, the rising cost of housing is just so insane yeah. that it's not a sustainable uh, life, especially to start a family. So my wife and I and, and our, uh, i trying to think how old he was at the time, like a year and a half old son at that time, we, we left uh, Phoenixville, we moved to Royersville, where we could find a house that was affordable. And, and I yeah. liked the, the idea of a really good school district, because that's important. Yeah. And it felt like Royersford had the ability to become a place that could boom and that if there would be a revitalization of downtown all of a sudden you know you you buy a house on the low end and you know after a, a little bit of time all of a sudden you have the same experience that you would have gotten somewhere else for three times the price or twice the price or whatever right. so we we ended up here and i'm glad we did yeah uh what year was it that you uh you guys moved here 20 16. Okay. Yeah. We moved here in 2017. So we're, and okay. we, I come, came to find out, it's kind of funny. I'll give you my little backstory of how I came across you. It's uh, uh, we'll get to it. We'll talk about crossing broad in a minute, but um, I followed the website and then started, found out about the podcast, started listening, was listening to you guys um, when it was the original three with Adam Lefko and, and, and yeah. Kyle. And uh, yeah. it was so cool because I was, I found you guys during the Eagles Super Bowl season and it was before mm -hmm. that. So I kind of, I got to listen into your thoughts leading through that entire season and then to have that moment and be able to share it. And then I come to find out through social media, I see this Russell joy popping up in all my local Facebook groups. Like the, you know, you're from Warriors for like all these Warriors. I was like, wait a minute, Russell joy. Like that can't be the same guy, is it? And then, Lo and behold, it's the same guy. And I find, come to find out that we live around, literally around the corner from each other, which yep. is crazy. We live through the trees. Like I could, if I decided to walk through the trees, I could get to your house that way. But uh, Through the trees, across God knows whatever else yeah. lies in between. Yeah. <laughs> the biohazard plant or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or whatever they do down there. I, I try not to, to think about. Uh, we, yeah, we just, <laughs> we prefer just to never think about. That's right. right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's, it's kind of crazy how like these worlds collided for me because I'm thinking like, these guys are just the guys that do this podcast and this website and everything. And then to realize that it was actually somebody who was right around the corner for me uh, was a cool thing. It was kind of like these, this small world aspect. And uh, as also someone who's, you know, got a website and is producing content and stuff, it was kind of nice to know like, Oh, okay, there's somebody out there that I can get in touch with and knows kind of the, the drill and, and we can yeah. commiserate together about it and stuff. So it's kind of, it's really been cool to, finally be able to do this and to talk with you about it because I feel like it's been a long time coming. So, um, well, it's kind of funny. Cause what was it a few months ago? I think was the first time you and I went back and forth on Facebook talking yeah. about uh, talking shop a little bit. And you're like, Hey, if you want to grab a coffee one day, I'm like, heck yeah, I love coffee. Like I'm, yeah. I'm all in, like, yeah. we'll go, we'll go wherever I'll go to yeah. any of the places downtown, except, you know, there's a certain time frame. We need to yeah. fix this by the way. If there's one good thing to come from this whole pandemic, it's yeah. Anna Marie's being open later in the day. Yes. Thank you. Thank I know. You. you thank thank you. You know? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I was all excited to get a cup of coffee and uh, life happened yes. and then the quarantine <laughs> happened. So I actually thought about having a, uh, a mug of coffee prepared. I was going to, you know, give you a cheers <laughs> while we were doing the show. Myself. I should have done it. Don't know yeah. why I didn't think of it until now, but uh, yeah. I could pause so here we and are. restart. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> no, but it's, it's cool, man, because yeah, like, it, I got turned into, I had, I had no idea who Adam Lefko was or anything. And now I've, 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 I listen to his podcast now and it's kind of been cool to 
it broadened my horizons. I've been a big podcast person. Probably I was probably late to the party, but I started doing podcasting back in 2015. Uh, just mm-hmm. like my own podcast, not not any local interest or anything like that. Um, but uh, it's been cool to really explore this medium. I went to Connecticut School of Broadcasting, actually, and uh, okay. I wanted to get into radio. That was like my goal when I was a very young man, like 20 years old. And I used to listen to the radio, you know, 610. They would advertise it all the time. And I was like, oh, I could do that. I did. The, I produced the radio program that my church had growing up. And, you know, right out of high school, I was doing, you know, the editing the sermons together. And they, they were on the local Christian radio station and stuff. And I was like, oh, I really love this, you know, audio editing, video production, all that kind of stuff. I really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, and somehow I missed the boat entirely the first go around of podcasting, like in 2008 or whatever that was. Yeah. And I was like, but I did a radio show for seven years uh, and never really thought to think about podcasting. And then come to find out, you know, 2015, that it's very easy to start one. Uh, I thought it was like this huge rigmarole to, to get things going. But uh, anyway, enough about me. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's a lot more. And now it's a lot more accessible than I think a lot of people realize. Yeah. You know, uh, it is funny, though, like yeah. when, when, when you bring up the old days, the good old days of the first show. And the crew that was on it, that was, yeah. a, that was a ride. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, you went the traditional route with Connecticut School of Broadcasting. I remember, uh, I think it was when I was in, a junior in college, I had this like crisis of faith moment where I was like, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. And like a dummy, instead of me being like, oh, well, there's a communications like, program here at Westchester. It's a good program. Like, why don't I do something with it? Or why don't I go do the Westchester radio thing? Never occurred to me. Why yeah. would it, right? <laughs> So I'm like sitting at home, I think it was the summer going into my senior year of college. And I was like, man, Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Like I could see it. Yeah. I could see it. Like, yeah. Because I remember hearing, I think it was like Harry Mays on 97.5. Yeah. Like I, I just, it was that same ad. And, and yeah. I just kept, and I loved listening to him and Tony Bruno. Now they're yeah. on Sirius. Um, but I remember thinking like, oh man, maybe that, that's the thing I could do. And then I started looking up the salaries that radio hosts make. And I'm like, nope, no, nope, nah, nah. Yeah. Because <laughs> nah. you need, I mean you need to be the drive time host or uh, really the big money's in the morning. Right. You know, like Angelo Cataldi kind of money. Yeah, you have to have the uh, sponsor. You need to be the guy that's drawing all of those sponsors and all of the yeah. advertisers. You know, that's what Anthony Gargano, he survived because he has so many sponsors, even though his, you know, I've, I, I used to listen. I, I don't, I, I tend to make things, bring things back to me. It's not, it's not, intentional but i it's the back and forth of a conversation some people it's your show it. you make it about you as much as you want <laughs> it's funny because that's been the one people have been overwhelmingly positive about discover springboard because literally like it's a love letter to their hometown but um the one critique well i've gotten two critiques in my time is that i talk too much and that i dress like a slob which i don't think that's true but uh okay hold on wait we, we need to <laughs> we need to pause this a second yeah. hold on who cares what you wear I know, right? You look delightful. <laughs> it's the quarantine. All right. That's right. <laughs> Everybody calm down. Just calm down. More, more so when I was meeting, at, it was at, particularly the Anna Marie's episode that I did because I was wearing like a baseball hat and just like a flannel shirt when I'm talking to the great, the, the incredible Anna Marie, which I get. Yeah. But I also, I was like, I have to explain to people and I, I kind of tried to. And then someone who I didn't know came to my defense was like, who cares what he wears, you know, which was great. But um, yeah, but I was like, I, I try to, if you go back and it's kind of strategic, nobody knows this, but I do. If you go back and look at the episodes, I try to dress to suit my guest, like depending on what okay. industry they're in. So like when I met, when I, uh, I wore a tie, when I met with uh, Mayor Jenna, you know, like I wore, sure. I dress at, like, but I'm going to Anna Marie's, like, I don't want to make her feel like if I go in wearing like a tie and or a sweater vest or it'd be blazer, weird. It'd it, that be would be weird. So it, I'm like, I feel went, out of place. It doesn't I make sense. I dress like somebody who was going to Anna Marie's. Like I try to create yeah. like the ambiance by, and that's a silly thing, but it helps me kind of get into the mental place of what I'm doing with that particular episode. So it's the actor in you. It's a good thing. Me, it is. It is the actor in me. It's funny. I, I love the transformative nature of performing. So, um, but anyway, it makes sense. Your yeah. critics can just go. Listen, that's right. this is, <laughs> this is the only podcast for discovering Spring Ford. And if you don't like it, you can go somewhere else. I don't care <laughs> or where. All right, there we go. Thank Seal you. of Thanks. approval. I <laughs> appreciate yeah. it. Russ says that uh, you have to like it, period. If you don't, yeah, there's period. something wrong with you. There's, uh, there's no other choice. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so it's, it's funny that uh, uh, I forget how I got on that, so I apologize. But um, the you were talking about Harry Mays and, oh, the, the, the sponsorship. I was going to say the uh, Anthony Gargano. I Before I got into this, 
when I was hearing the, uh, the ads for kinetic school broadcasting was at a time when I had no idea what I was going to do. I had graduated from high school. I didn't go to college um, because I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I didn't want to go to college and waste time and waste money until I knew what I wanted to do. So I did the gap year before it was a thing. Um, and uh, I was working. Make you a uh, gap for, hipster? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was a hipster before it was a thing. I have pictures of yeah. proof. I have pictures of myself with thick black rim glasses and a bushy beard in like 2011. So uh, I was way ahead of the curve at that point. Uh, but anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> but I would listen. I was driving a tow truck, believe it or not. I was, okay. I was 19 years old and I was working at an automotive place originally as a gopher. Uh, they hired me like, oh, you're going to drive and pick up these cars and you're going to pick up parts. And, you're gonna... and then they were like, oh, we need a tow truck driver. We're going to continue to pay you $8 an hour but you're going to be a tow truck driver now. And we're going to send you out on these calls that are crazy, like to temple uh, in the middle of the night, like crazy. Yeah. yeah that sounds like, like, like fun. It was, it was yep. crazy. It was absolutely crazy. And uh, it was not a fun job, but that's when I was like, I have to do something with my life. And I would hear these ads and I would listen to Steve Martirano and Anthony Gargano in the afternoons. That, that'll age me a little bit. Uh, this was probably 2002, 2003. Okay. And I would hear these ads for Kennedy School Broadcasting, and they're like, Anthony Gargano, he is Philly. And then, like, as I've gotten older, you're kind of like, I get it, but <laughs> the shtick gets old after a while. So, I, I, yeah, well, it's I love you, because, Anthony. I love well, you. You got me through a lot of long drives out to Timbuktu to pick up cars and ditches and stuff. But yeah, that, it but is that, funny, though, like, because growing up where I grew up, none of the the stations were, were really something that you could pick up. Yeah. Um, WIP you could pick up just the tiniest bit but it depended on the day like this is how far we're going back now and <laughs> and it was and when I was in high school it wasn't like they had the streaming setup they have now like radio.com that WIP yeah, uses okay. now like where they've got like the awesome ability to like go back and rewind the shows as they're going on almost as if you're that's listening yeah. I guess like that stuff's wild you know yeah. but we didn't we didn't have that so like the whole concept of sports talk radio was non-existent to me as wow. a as a kid and like even getting into college, it wasn't until I got to Westchester that I started listening to sports talk radio. It had never crossed my mind. I had no real interest. I just like to, you know, yell about sports with the rest of my friends. It was never right. like a, it was never a thing to conceptualize. And it's just kind of funny how, how things kind of fell into place, you know? Yeah. Were you growing up in, in Schuylkill County? Is that still Eagles territory in terms of sport or is it kind of split? It's, or how does it it's weird. A lot of people uh, have a hard time understanding this. So uh, once I think you get north of Berks County, it's a free for all. Okay. And, and it's totally okay in a lot of places for you to be a Philly and a Pittsburgh fan in pretty oh, much anything. Really? So you could, for the most part, you're an Eagles fan, but you, you allow the Steelers to exist and like, it's okay. And if, right. if you were watching um, Antoine Randall L throw a touchdown, off of like a wide receiver screen right. or something, right? Yeah. That's fine. And you could cheer for that. Yeah. Um, but like there was a fine line because yeah. <laughs> you you still couldn't really be a Flyers fan and a Penguins fan. Oh, yeah. You, ca- you kind of had to pick your camp, fan. but like you could appreciate the Legion of Doom, but you could also kind of be okay with understanding that Mario Lemieux was one of the best players of all time. It was weird. Right. Yeah. It was okay, but but it wasn't totally uncommon to see people with like Steelers and Eagles magnets. Okay. That was kind of okay. Yeah. So I guess it's weird. It helps that it, the Steelers and Eagles aren't necessarily rivals in any form, other than yeah, I mean, cross state rivals. But I mean, yeah, it's not and, like the Penguins and the Flyers have a long storied history. So yeah. that that there's definitely some bad blood there. So I can imagine that that yeah that would divide families turning yeah. fathers against their children and children against their fathers. You know? Yeah. The only people that you really got behind hating regardless were Cowboys fans. And right. um, like sometimes the, you'd almost feel bad for New York fans. Yeah. Like if, if one, like one of my buddies growing up, he and his, uh, he and his sister were Mets fans. Well, really his sister was a Mets fan. He wasn't as big of a, of a sports fan, but like, I think both of their parents were from New York. So like, it was okay. Right. Like you can, you can pass that on to your kids, but it didn't mean that we didn't find it funny when your team was garbage kind of thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, those were the kind of people that like, you would, you would almost like gang up as a, as a group, like, hold on a second, we have a New York fan. And then he, they'd have to explain themselves. It's like, all right, fine. You can, you can be a new, a new York fan. It's, but the, the Cowboys fans, there's no excuse. You just can't right. do that. <laughs> you can't. No. I, the fact that 
people don't understand this about Cowboys fans. Uh, maybe they do, but it's not so much that they're fans of the Cowboys. It's the reason they're fans of the Cowboys that really yeah. makes – it's like you had a team that you could have easily rooted for, but you chose to pick a team that was more successful irrespective of anything you did, <laughs> yep. you know, or anything. That's what – I think that's what grates at people more. It's like – it's not like – you know, there's a lot of people that are fans of teams that don't have a home affiliation, so they just kind of latch on and they're like, sure. oh, I grew up in – you know, a town that doesn't have a team. So I picked the Cowboys. Right? I grew up in Wyoming. So I right, picked like, the Cowboys. In order to because... be a Cowboys fan in this area, you have to have abandoned your home team, you know, like, and that's yeah. I think what bothers people the most, you know, like I have no problem with people who are like from Texas that live here that still root for the Cowboys. Or I get like the whole family thing. Like my dad was a Cowboys fan and I kind of grazed with that. I kind of understand it just in terms yeah, of Yeah, like, that's okay until you're 13 surrounded. and then you yeah. can make a choice on your own and you yeah, can decide you that have... your dad's been and wrong this time and you could make a better it's called a coming of age it's called yeah a, a sports mitzvah, yeah, right? as it were uh, <laughs> but uh so this, this is funny um this i guess this would be a good time to talk about how you know obviously not growing up with this type of sports coverage uh as as intense as it is in the philly area um where you can't get away from it and then coming to westchester which was probably like a fish out of the water kind of experience a little bit but then you know, how did that translate into what you're now doing and your involvement with Crossing Broad? You can share that story a little bit. Sure. It was, uh, it was kind of funny. There was, uh, I think it was like, I'm trying to remember what year we started doing the show. I think it was 2017. It was 2017. Yeah. That sounds right. Um, my, one of my buddies reached out to me. He was like, hey, I, I saw um, that Kyle from Crossing Broad is starting a podcast. You should send in a thing. I'm like, I, I have no business doing that. I've never... <laughs> I've never done anything like that before. I can't imagine that it's going to go well. There's like, and like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not one to be like overly reserved and, right. and like not sure of myself on certain things, but I was like, I don't know. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to want to do the show. Like, no, you, who am you I? didn't know him before that. Like, no. you just were a fan of the site or whatever. Yeah. I, I oh, just okay. like, I casually read the site. Yeah. from time to time and and honestly i don't know if i ever told him this but uh it wasn't it wasn't like in my rotation of like my yeah. top three things because at the time crossing broad was like very tmz ish yes. like, it was very like it, was it still has the moniker irreverent. of like yeah. philly's yeah it was like philly's most irreverent sports blog but like yeah. it used to be like tmz ish now it's not now it's like a an actual thing Lomber. with credential <laughs> with credential <laughs> reporters and everything but like it's it's like a vastly different thing but um I was like, all right, the heck with it. I'll send it in. So I reached out to him and he was like, yeah, just send me a, send me a clip. And I, I found it on like an old hard drive. Uh, I think like a month ago or something. I was like, what did I, what did I audition on? Like, what was my, what was my topic? And I, and uh, the one was at the time, like I, I'd really gotten into, I don't know if you know, reply all. It's a, a podcast from Gimlet there. It's, it's okay. fantastic. It's all about yeah. the internet. Like it's, oh, okay. it's all about like, things that have happened on the internet and stuff. It's, it's a really good show to listen to. Um, but the way that they would structure their shows was like more of that, like serial kind of intro. So right. I did one like that. Uh, and then I did a, uh, a clip about how Josh Harris was a terrible owner and how, <laughs> and like, this is before it was cool to hate Josh Harris, the Sixers right. owner. And I had this whole thing about how, you know, ever since he's taken a, a partial ownership stake at Crystal Palace in the EPL, that, their, their fans have hated him, that the investment hasn't gone well, they won't invest in top tier players, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's going to happen here. It's just a matter of time, which ended up kind of being accurate. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I sent that in and then uh, it was like a week or two until I heard something. I'm like, all right, I'm out. It's, it, it's fine. And, and I, I'm kind of persistent. So I would like check in every few days and sometimes right. he'd answer, sometimes he wouldn't. And then uh, at one point he, he called me and he was like, yeah, I, I, like, I like what you did a lot of people that submitted stuff, it wasn't good. And he's like, there were even people who were in radio at that point. And a couple of people, oddly enough, I think, I, who cares? I'll tell us, whatever. <laughs> uh, there were a few people who were doing TV at the time in, in Philly, some that were affiliated with like Philly sports TV and some people who were like just regular broadcast channel uh, that wanted to dip their toes into sports. Wow. And uh, he was like, yes, it just, it wasn't going to work. There, yeah. there was just no way. And he's like, I want to try the show with, a three man booth, which right away I was like, okay, I, I can conceptualize how this works. But he was like, yeah, it's this guy who works for Bleacher Report. Okay. Cause Bleacher Report, I was, I was familiar with, but like, yeah. 
also not like one of my rotation sites. So whatever. And uh, he's like, yeah, the guy's name's Adam Lefko. He's from around here, but he like works out in New York. I was like, okay. So I looked him up and he was doing a show at the time with Chris Sims, the yep. former NFL quarterback. And um, I was like, okay, like this is going to be a weird, this will be a weird dynamic, but like I, I'm here for it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, that was, and that was it. And we did pretty much, I guess a full year. We went through uh, the Eagles Super Bowl run and then we hit the summer. And that was a, that was a whole other thing, but like doing that year, that first year was wild. Right. And, and like now looking at where left has gone off to has been insane. Yeah. He's he, blown up. It's crazy. Well, he went from, he went from his show to Chris Sims. Uh, I think got an offer from NBC at the time yeah. to do some of their football coverage, which made sense. And now Lefko's doing Tuesday nights on TNT, uh, <laughs> sitting Shaq. on a panel with uh, Shaq and Dwayne Wade and Candace Parker. Yep. And, I, and I'm like, it's, <laughs> it's like, it's funny to sit back and watch it now because I'm like, all right, well, he was already ahead in his career. I yeah. get it. But it's like, I used to do a show with that dude. Like, that's yeah. kind of funny. It's yeah, kind of cool. Really cool in its own way. So, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's a hardworking guy. Yeah, and, sure. and like, you know, some people you run into are total egomaniacs and he wasn't like that. Yeah. It was, it was good to see somebody who was working hard and, and put in a lot of hours, you know, get a shot and, and get a legitimate, you know, bump up within their company. So it was, it's cool. Yeah. And especially to have somebody in that position that is a, a diehard Philadelphia sports fan unapolog- unapologetically, which, yeah. you know, everybody says, oh, you give up your fandom when you get in. I'm like, no, you don't. Like, stop this <laughs> nonsense. You can't. If you don't. You're never... If you can get rid of your fandom, then you were never really a true fan, I think. That's yeah, why well, it's I, kind of fraudulent, too. Yeah. It's, it's like you're, you're suppressing this thing that's been part of who you are. Yeah. You know, I, you're supposed to still be, you know, objective or whatever. But, you yeah. you, you know, it's okay to admit who, yeah. who you rooted for as a kid. There's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't yeah. – it shouldn't change anybody's perception about your ability to do your job. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's funny because we, you know, we have – all these, you know, and I know you guys kind of talk about this too, but this is a, this is scratching an itch for me to get to talk to you about this stuff because I don't have, other than my brothers, I don't really talk. And my, I have one friend who's like my, my, uh, my buddy who I text through an entire Eagles game. Like we just text back and forth the whole time. <laughs> like, and then usually it's like, we have to stop texting cause I'm getting too angry, you know, I yeah. put the phone aside. Um, but yeah, like all the people that the, the general Philly market fans, think our Philly guys aren't Philly guys. Like we, you know, they're from Connecticut. Yeah, they're, they're from, from Massachusetts. Yeah. Morgan, they're from New York. All the Glenn McNall, who I love Glenn McNall, but he, he, he is someone who still is very forthcoming that he grew up a Bills fan. And yeah. you know, like I appreciate when people can say like, I adopted this team because this is the town and I really have come to love them, but they admit that they also have this allegiance to this other team, which I totally understand. But the people who try to act like they speak for the Philly fan and you're like, oh, what? <laughs> like, well, cause you get paid here. That's, that's why you speak. Yeah, exactly. You, drop. you know, it's a little, well, although it is, it is kind of a skill to yeah. be able to sit back and, and try to, and actually be able to convince people who are like, Oh no, no, no. he didn't grow up in Massachusetts. <laughs> he's a Philly guy, Bo. And right. you're like, well, hold on a second. No, he's not. He's yeah, it's funny. definitely I, not. I know there's a lot of guys that from here that have gone elsewhere. Um, and I, you know, uh, there's a couple guys that were like on the fanatic and stuff that they started here. They were local guys. And then, you know, it didn't work out. And then they end up going to cover like the giants or something like that. And I wonder yeah. like, it must be so bizarre for them to like have, you know, but that's what people do in this industry. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty, I didn't realize it was just kind of like, yeah, I'll just submit this thing and see. Yeah, it was just on a whim. I was like, <laughs> all right. Yeah. I said to my buddy, I'm like, all right, I'll send it. I'm like, well, yeah, whatever. That's... We'll see what happens. And then I think it was like within, um, I guess it was about a, a year or so into doing that show i like made the pitch about like hey i think we could take all the stuff that's being done on the site and what if we did podcast like what if we what if we did more than one what if we just made a network out of it wow and kyle who runs the site's like uh yeah, whatever and i was like no no, no no i'm like hold on anyway like you have you have multiple people who are credentialed for these different teams like have season-long credentials get to to be around the team, get to be in the locker room, get to, you know, build relationships and rapport with players, with executives, with coaches, with I'm like, we should be utilizing it. What are we right. doing? You know, yeah, right. <laughs> it's and, uh, resources. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so, uh, so we started that and, and like those shows have, have done well and yeah, it's, it, it was like kind of cool. Like that was, I guess like my, my sports media baby was right. uh, creating and building that podcast network into something that has like thousands of, of listeners on each show, which is really cool. You know? Yeah. And I know you guys for a while were, were also on ESPN uh, radio and that's, kind yeah, of we were, podcast we were team. doing, yeah, we were doing, um, so our, our Phillies podcast, uh, crossed up, which is, uh, one of my, one of my co-hosts for the hockey show that we do, Anthony Sanfilippo, who writes, or used to write for the Delco times. So like all of the Delco people know who he is. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've now compared Delco to Schuylkill County. It's like, it's like Schuylkill County of Southeast PA Yeah. because it, everybody knows everybody. You could see the same thing in Delco that you would see, except it's happening outside of a Wawa instead of a Sheets. It's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> um, and our Phillies writer, Bob Wankel, th- their show was doing so well that we, you know, we, we started this whole thing with uh, ESPN radio and um, they went on. And then in the fall, we took the original show crossing broadcast and then the hockey show, snow, the goalie, we took those on to ESPN radio. It was cool. Yeah. It was a, it was like a neat experience to get the feel for being in the studio and, it was, it, it was a good experience. It yeah. was solid. Mm-hmm. But like at, at some point, I think anybody who has done something like that before, and especially if you come from like starting as a podcast, when you go podcast radio and you've done radio and, yeah. and to podcast, you could mm-hmm. probably speak to this, but like there's a certain lack of freedom that you have right. when you're constrained to a 60 minute time limit like we were. And when you're constrained on having people in studio or not, or taking calls and you like a, a portion of your fan base that says, I, I listen to podcasts, so I don't have to listen to calls. Right. And then they got like, and there's, there's like this real push and tug. <clears throat> and so we were, we were rocking on 610. We were like one of the only shows. I think we were the only two shows that were getting paid by the station because wow. most of it's syndicated radio. Yeah. And then there are other people who like go on and they cut their own deals where they pay Beasley Media to be on the air. We were this like very strange case study. Like we had a big enough reach through the site that they thought it was beneficial, you know, to to pay us to be on air. Um, and then the, I guess it was about a month before the pandemic hit, the uh, station head passed away suddenly. Oh, wow. And so they they like reached out to us and they're like, hey, we're we're pulling all the shows that we pay until we have a new station chief. And then the quarantine hit. Oh, so yeah. we have... We have not been back on the radio right. and uh, you know, it, it was a cool experience while it lasted, but yeah, it's like, it's odd. And in a sense, I actually kind of like having the freedom back of being yeah. able to, to not have to look at a clock and have a time limit on this anymore. It's it kind of makes you appreciate that a little bit more. Yeah. That's one thing. Even, I mean, outside of, it's funny. Cause I, with the discover spring Ford, there isn't really a format. There's not really a time limit. But I, I'm always thinking in the back of my mind, like, okay, like how, how long can this really go until someone says this is boring? Um, you know, and I'm, I'm indiscriminate in terms of who I feature in terms, you know, like if they have a business within the Springford school district, you know, they're, and they want to do it, I'll do it. You know, I don't say like, you have to be particularly yeah. interesting or you have to have a sob story or, you know, like the way they do it, like with TV. It's not going to be like, like the NFL draft where it's like, hey. Right. <laughs> This kid was just drafted. Let's not talk about his abilities. Let's talk about that time that in third grade, his best friend died. And you're like, what? yeah, it's such a downer. It's just that like, for three hours. You're like, I, what? I was watching, I was actually speaking of, I got turned on the Bleacher Report because of Adam Lefko and because of listening to Crossing Broad. So I was actually um, in between watching TV with my wife, I had their live stream on my phone, okay. the Bleacher Report. Yeah. Um, because I'm one of those people that like, yeah, like, that idea of like the commercials and the calls. And it's like, we're in such an on-demand world now. It's like, I don't need to, to listen to any of this if I don't want to. So I was yeah. like, okay, I'll watch this. And then I saw the posts after the fact, like on social media about like, what was all of this? Like, why were they throwing? I saw oh, yeah. Press, and I was like, oh my gosh. And there was this one screenshot about, they had to apologize for putting about the kid. His it was, mom a, was, a T, was a T Higgins. Or yeah. Like, yeah. It was like, you t- you're telling me you can't find four bullet points about this kid's playing career? There's that, no, yeah. it's just like, oh, his mom struggled with drug addiction. Well, so, what do you say to that? <laughs> yeah, like you know, that's, that's here's awful. a 
question though. How do you think some of the players felt who like also thought they went through a tragedy in their life, but didn't have it <laughs> highlighted? Right. You know, it's like, uh, this oh, man well, I guess clinically you know, dead my, for two minutes and he is now yeah, a or starting like, running back for whatever. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, my, my sister was in a coma for three years, but she woke up. So that doesn't count. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it was, <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird. Like, weird. cause then you're, I don't know. It's and like, like when you don't you don't want to like mention people because you know you'll leave somebody out and then they'll feel bad. It's the same exactly. kind of thing. You don't want to like dip your toe in that water because someone's going to get offended about something. You might as well just stick to the stick to sports. Get back to the Eagles, you know. Well, and it's you know? also too like you you think about it. And it's like um, I think it was uh, the one kid from from Penn State whose name is now escaping me. Got drafted Handler? by the Panthers, and uh, KJ Hamler. Or... No, 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 it was a. I don't remember who it was, but. Yeah. He had this like very like horribly gut wrenching, you know, heartbreaking story, and and it's like one of those moments that like, it's it's how it's supposed to be, right? Because yeah. it's it's Disney, it's ABC. You're supposed right. to like cry and the whole thing. It's like American um, Idol. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and I got him like I'm like that guy. I hope he succeeds, you know. <laughs> and then like the next guy, there was no sob story, and you're like, you know what? What an entitled like now. Nah, yeah, right. <laughs> I can't support that. This guy's never had to struggle for anything. You know? That's right. He's got so. a silver spoon in his mouth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is so funny too, because you're like, your first, you're gonna make in your next fantasy draft, you're gonna pick this guy you saw on this draft that had a really sad story, and then he's gonna get you no points. You're be like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> I felt, I fell for it. Why did you have to do that? Yeah. That's funny. Um. So yeah, how, what was it? What is it like as someone who, you know, you were a fan of, grew up a fan of the Flyers, you grew up a fan of these teams, and now you're actually able as a credentialed person to go and interview the head coach and be in the press box and that kind of stuff. Was that like a pinch me kind of moment for you? This is going to sound really awful, but no, it was weird. Oh, okay. um, was it like gradual enough? Like the, the steps that you took to that, that it was more just like the next step. It made sense. Or? I don't know. It, it, it might've been, I think that there's like, there's such a value. So my, my co-host Anthony, who I talked about before, like, he had worked for the team for years and he's in, I think it's his 20th year covering the team. And oh, wow. so, so there was already this kind of built up idea. The first year that we did snow, the goalie, he was down there as the only credentialed guy. And no, that's not true. This is my second year. Cover. It must, it was a few months. That's what it was. So we were finishing up the season. I guess the season that ended in 2018 is when we started doing the show. We did it, yeah, started in April of 2018. That's right. Uh, as I think this out, I should know yeah. these things. You know. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> um, but he was, he would like kind of feed me some info about what was going on and, and if some of my instincts and everything about what I was seeing from a distance were right and all that. And then that summer he was like, I'm going to try to get you a credential. Like I think it would make a lot of sense for us to both be down there covering. Okay. So I think just by virtue of having him there, and the connections that he has within people in the organization to introduce me to and the other writers and, and that kind of thing, that, that sort of took away a lot of the initial fear that I think you would feel like there was still like a little bit of apprehension, but right. it, it was like, that definitely helped. Mm -hmm. And then there's just kind of like a moment where you realize everybody's a human being, like the people right. that, you know, you watched for years on daily news live on Comcast sports net, you know, when they used to have yeah. like the brick background and everything, you're yeah. like, Oh man, I can, um, someday I'm going to grow up and I'm going to go meet, uh, uh, Sam Donnellan or, yeah. or whatever, you know, <laughs> that's like, and then, Oh, <laughs> Sam Donnellan's over eating at that, at that table right over there. And he's like, that's he's great. just a human yeah. wearing his Mr. Rogers sweater. What a nice man, <laughs> you know, he's a nice guy. Yeah. But like you see these people and, and then you're like, all right, well, you, you know, just, you're just a human. And like, even even with the Flyers players themselves, like the first time going in the locker room, we um, I'm trying to think who the first interview was with, but we went to Skate Zone. So you know, like the drive from here to Voorhees is is a yeah. bear. Yeah. And so going down there the first time and and going through like what it was like to interview a, a player one on one and go into the the locker room at Skate Zone was its own thing, and right. and that kind of took away a lot of that initial I think like shock value that by the time the season rolled around, there were a couple of in the locker room that we kind of would catch eyes. I was like, all right, we, we've, we've met, we've talked, this is. And so I think that helped for yeah. sure. And now we were wrapping up or we're waiting to wrap up the second season that I've covered them. And like, we have some jokes, some inside jokes with a couple of the players down there because we've been able to, to build that kind of rapport with some of them. We know that they read the stuff that we write. Yeah. Um, 
we know that they listen to the show. We know that people in the Flyers organization very high up listen to the show. Some of them that's like funny. us and some of them don't. Yeah, but sure. like, but like there's, there's something that's uh, like kind of fulfilling in that and something that's reaffirming in that because yeah. the worst thing you could have is people that are just down the middle about your show, right? Because right. you're not going to, you listen to a mediocre thing, you're not going to tell anybody about it would you you know mm -hmm. you're even kind of juggling the idea of like do i go back and listen or not yeah some people hate listening to things and some people love listening right yeah. <laughs> either way you're still getting people listening to it right now for your show it's different i think right yeah. because you you have to play the the middle zone to some extent because yeah. you want to build as much of a community around the show i guess it's yeah it's, it's an interesting the, thing because i yeah. feel like I, I, I wrestle with that sometimes because I'm like, you know, obviously I'm limited in terms of like the, 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 the geographic area that I've selected to highlight. Um, but then as I start to go like, oh, should I like expand and like start a second show where I highlight this other area over here, like mm -hmm. Human Valley or whatever, you know, like to start to yeah. become a big uh, thing. But I'm like, ah, I just don't have the passion for that kind of thing. But then it's also, it's like, should I be a little bit more like, distinct so that it does kind of create that heat as it were to borrow a wrestling term but uh, you know hey there we yeah. go yes <laughs> there we go. let's go the wrestling well, round all right well it's funny because i when you had said the thing about people liking you and hating you i thought immediately of john cena because that's like his big thing is that he was so polarizing but he still he was a big draw because of that very reason and yeah. we talked a little bit about wrestling uh in that in the first episode with gary brown because he's a huge he actually interned with the wwe uh, for a short time. He's a big wrestling guy too. So um, I was not, I, I don't want to re regurgitate everything I said to him, but the short version is I watched it in the heyday, the glory days of yep. the late eighties, early nineties, when I was like seven, eight years old. Um, and then, and it was like, wait, my parents were divorced. So my, you know, my dad would get the pay-per-views. We would watch them together. It was like a big Sunday night thing and it was fun. Um, and then once I hit like 12, like I didn't really care about it anymore before the attitude era. Cause I'm a little bit, I'm 36. Yeah. So a little bit before uh, the, the renaissance of, of professional wrestling. Like I got out when it started to kind of falter a little bit, like with Diesel, yeah. and, you know, oh. <laughs> that transitional Oof. period with Oof. Bret Hart Oof. and and Diesel and, nah. and everybody was aging like Ric Flair and Randy Savage. Yeah. But I, on a whim, started listening to a podcast on vacation last summer called Something to Wrestle with Bruce Pritchard. Which Bruce is Pritchard, all yeah. about that era. And I was like, and it just like rekindled all like my childhood nostalgia. So then I've started getting back into it and I now have the, the network. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did it for this. Uh, Conrad party. Thompson. Yeah. The pod yeah, father. So, yeah. yeah it's it's funny. Cause it's funny because uh, I was a, it's, it's funny to look back on it now and to realize this is the second mistake that my parents made after uh, <laughs> the, the middle initial fiasco. Um, when I was, when I was a kid, I remember wanting to watch pro wrestling and so there was a there was a moment where my parents and I sat down and I had to show them WCW Monday Nitro and I had to show them <laughs> WWF at the time Monday Night Raw and whichever one was less offensive was going to be the one that they were going to let me watch right oh my gosh and so and this is during uh, like the attitude era right or yeah it? it was oh, like okay. it was it was right around that it was right before the WWF decided to try to mimic it was like the NWO was just starting and WWF okay. was still like being kind of like cartoonish and gimmicky and like, yeah. you know, fun, fan, family fun, like yeah. they're trying to do now. And it's not good. Um, and my parents watched WCW and they're like, okay, well, this is, uh, uh, if, if you have to, right? right. Cause you got Goldberg, right. And Goldberg's right. like a, you know, perfectly upstanding member of society. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then like we turned on uh, WWF and I think, Thing. It was like right as DX was, uh, oh, uh, no, scratch that. We did the WCW thing and I didn't, I didn't want to watch WWF because yeah. I, I didn't like the campiness. Right. Yeah. So I think one day my parents came in while the NWO was on yeah. and like my parents saw them throwing the trash in the ring and I'm like, Oh, that was WWF. And they're like, Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I remember like one of my buddies growing up, his dad would let him watch WWF and he started telling me about stone cold and the rock and yeah and dx so then i went to my parents one day i'm like hey i'm I don't know, 12 i don't know and uh i'm like i should be able to watch something like that and they're like well okay put it on let's see what it looks like and it was like dx and the gyrations <laughs> and everything and like oh china fighting a guy and they're like no <laughs> under no circumstances are you allowed to watch that 
never, <laughs> ever, ever. I'm like, all right, well, I won't. so it's just fine. I, but now like I listened to, um, uh, 83 weeks with Eric Bischoff right. to go back and relive the WCW days and, and, uh, what happened when with Tony Schiavone. So like, I'm like living all, all those and, and also like JR, right? right. JR has a podcast. So like, I kind of get some of the, it was like weird to find out that JR had originally been in WCW. And like yeah. Back and I forth. didn't realize that. My, like Shivani worked in WWF for a while. I was like, this is not okay. Like <laughs> these are, these are the childhood voices of these different companies. They were never allowed to. And like now they both work on AEW. It's very, it's very <clears throat> upsetting. It's yeah, I know. There's so, so much going on back. I mean, that's kind of like local radio actually. <laughs> we <laughs> like, just went, we just went down a, a wrestling rabbit hole on Discover Spring Forward. That's know? what's so good that's about it is that this, this format is a little bit looser because there's, we're not pr- promoting a business. We're not, you know, it's, it's more of just a, let's face it. It's more just to keep me busy. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe I should have said that. Um, no, but it's it's fun. It's this is like, your social interaction. This is okay. It really is, and it, it this is definitely more geared towards the podcast and the video aspect, whereas the Discover Springboard is is more about the video aspect. Uh, even though initially it wasn't, it was originally just going to be a podcast, and someone was like, "You should film it." And I was like, "Oh yeah, I guess I could do that. I could take some B roll shots, and make it a little interesting." Yeah. Um, but uh, it's funny because that's so. When this is all over, we're going to go downtown. We're going to get a coffee. You and I are going to sit outside of a coffee shop at six feet. We're both yes. going to wear a baseball cap and a flannel shirt. <laughs> and we and won't say anything. We'll just have right. that coffee and we'll put it up as an episode. It'd be great. That'll be great. even be and better for the podcast feed. You, know, just the, <laughs> you just hear the, the lovely driving. sipping sounds, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and they just see if anybody will heck, heckle us for our, our poor choice of clothing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but you, you had said about like, was any of it kind of like, um, overwhelming or, or right. like uh nerve-wracking yeah there was only one player in the entire time that i've i've been down covering the the flyers that i was like whoa whoa yeah it wasn't a flyer oh really no uh i went over into the opposing locker room for uh a quote and Sidney crosby was sitting there now you have oh, to wow. remember I've spent my entire life hating Sidney Crosby, right? Yeah. Like I have cursed Sidney Crosby right. so much. I, oh. And so I get into the locker room and I'm like, do I go rogue? Like, who <laughs> cares, right? Like I have another job to fall back on. If I just go rogue and, <laughs> and, and like film myself cursing out Sidney Crosby, what's the worst that could happen? I'll lose, I'll lose the other job. Uh, I'll lose yeah. this, you know. Yeah. So I get there and I'm like two feet away. And I'm like, this is going to, this guy's going to go down as the top five all time player in the NHL without a doubt. Yeah. And like the moment of that, oddly enough, kind of hit me. And I was wow. like, this is cool. And that was yeah. the first time I looked around. I'm like, all right, this is really cool. You know? Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. And I wonder if yeah. there's that so, because it's like that aura of the, the villain or, or whatever, you know, like he's like, he's the guy that is like, ah, you know, so that yeah. there's a detachment there that you can't. Whereas when it's the Flyers, you're so ingrained uh, in the team and the players and stuff like that, that, you know, you feel like you kind of already know them, I guess. Yeah. Just because you, well, you root for them, you support them, and you're like, they're, they're my best friends or whatever, you know? like Yeah, you know, it's yeah. yeah there's it's it's funny because, like, you, you almost feel like to some extent, you're like, yeah, if I ever meet these guys, like, I, I, mean, I, I hope they're just as cool and just as, <laughs> as nice as I always thought they were, you know? Right. And, like, you get down, and, and actually most of the guys are, are nice, decent people, and some, some of them are you – know, um, but for the most part, everybody's, you know, <laughs> solid, nice. And um, it, it is, it is funny though. Cause like over the last couple of years, we've had some, some real stalwarts of the franchise yeah. on the show and like meeting Ron Hextall and having him on and not realizing how tall Ron Hextall was and how huge mungus his, uh, his hands are, right? Yeah. Like he just enveloped my entire hand. And I was like, okay, <laughs> this guy, um, we have Bob Clark on and Bob, Bobby Clark's, you know, talking to us about his favorite kinds of beer and going fishing. And, wow. uh, and like we did our video guy for the site that, that a whole, I think it was like a minute and a half minute, 45 mashup of every beer reference Bobby Clark made during the interview. <laughs> and I, just, I just, Oh, you gotta love a good beer. And they're just like <laughs> talking to Bobby Clark. Like, this is cool. Like, obviously so I'm, awesome. I'm too, I'm too young to have watched him during his playing days. So like my, my real point of reference was him as a, as the GM of the team and meeting AV this year, Lane Vigneault, the, the new coach and, and realizing like this guy's taken two different teams to a Stanley cup final. 
hasn't won, but like has taken yeah. like there there are some of those moments where you're just like right. this is really neat, you know. Yeah. That's cool. It must be really cool for people who knew you back when too to see kind of like like whether it's your your uncles, your, you know, that you know, your family seeing you being a Flyers fan and then being like, wait, you get to like you get to meet these guys? <laughs> like it must be such a surreal well, thing for them. So I, I don't think I've ever told anybody <laughs> this story. Um, an exclusive for humans. Of an exclusive. Da, 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 da. Um, so like some people have like the daddy complex, right? Where like, it's, it's all about like proving to your dad that you're right. valuable or whatever. I've, I never had that, that problem. My parents always made me feel like what I wanted to do in life was, was, was great. As long as I had a plan and like, they were very positive people, like very reaffirming. Right. So I never had like that. I need to prove myself, you know, like all the good. Yeah you know, action hero movies are. <laughs> um, but when we would get together as a family at my Baba's house uh, on holidays, right? Like Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, Easter, there's always a sport event on, right? right. And I was never like allowed to be part of the conversation about sports. <laughs> oh, man. My uncles would talk, my older cousins would talk, and I was like afraid to chime in. And then like every once in a while I would chime in and I knew I was right, but I was still the youngest one in the room. And so I'd still get like talked down or talked over. And I was like, oh, come on. And so finally, I just remember like one of the, the last times our family had gotten together before my Baba like had to go into the um, nursing home. I just remember like one day they were talking about, some, I think it was like something with the process or something yeah. with the Sixers. And like, I can't believe they're doing all this horrible losing. I'm like, you realize that you've been supporting a team that's been at best mediocre for <laughs> 20 years and you're going to be upset because they're going to lose like 60 games, 70 games. Who cares? Right. You're, like, you're just cheering on mediocrity. Yeah. Like, it's deal lose with 40, it. Losing 45 games and losing 60 games, there's not much of a difference. <laughs> well, the, uh, but obviously, like the Maybe. difference is you don't get top end talent if you yeah, have right. a 500 team in the draft, unless you're really good at drafting, yeah. which the Sixers historically really haven't been. So, but yeah, like I remember like having that moment and the room just kind of fell silent. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. And, uh, and then all this stuff started to happen. And I was like, oh, it's really cool that you're doing that. I'm like, yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. That's awesome. So, yeah. Well, I'll say, going back to what you said, like I was, uh, it's, it, it was kind of surreal for me to, to start to connect the dots here. Um, because like I said, I, my first exposure to you was as this guy on a podcast that I listened to. So to be able to have a, just a chill conversation with you, it's been a, a pleasure. And, uh, you know, you're everything. I was like, oh, I hope he's as nice as he sounds on the show. And, like, you know, I feel like we could hit it off and get along. And you've proven that to be more than the case. So thank you so much, man. This has been a blast. Oh, shucks. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> His cheeks are well, getting thanks. I'm just kidding. Uh, well, like, <laughs> well, you, would, you would hope that people are nice, though, right? Like, getting right. – being, being awful doesn't <laughs> – I mean, you might get somewhere, but you're going to be emotionally devoid of, yeah. of any kind of real, uh, I don't know, pride. Like yeah. at some point, that kind of stuff catches up to you. Like, there's oh, no for point. sure, especially and now. So, like it's there's no point well, to to be one way in front of one person and be a different way in front of another person. It's just too much to keep track of. I think you know, like yeah, it it is. And like I, I don't know, I've just never understood it. I yeah. I don't there the and I can tell you like some of the people that that people might have thought were nice that that were in the media and you get down you start meeting some of these people are hearing the the way that they conduct themselves and you're like that's really upsetting right you know but then there are some where you're like wow this person's actually really really nice i've never read their stuff before i'm gonna go give it a look that's and cool. yeah and and i think a lot of the the people that were questionable have kind of phased out yeah. over the over the last i don't know five years or so but it is it is kind of cool to uh I don't know. It's it's kind of cool to have a, a a spot now and and be able to kind of give back. And there have been some people in the last year or so that are, have been younger there for their first game, and like we're about the same age. So I try to like take those people and, and try to work with them because I was lucky to have somebody who could like really hold my hand into that. There are yeah. a lot of people who aren't as fortunate. So it's kind of cool. Anyway, it was it was yeah. nice to talk to you. Yeah, it, man, definitely. This is fun. So, uh... Yeah, I mean, I would love to. We could do this anytime. I, I'm totally fine with that. So, uh, and then definitely once everything clears up. I mean, even now we could just sit across the street from each other and yell things, and, you know. We could. <laughs> the megaphones out. Ah! <laughs> ah! That's right. We do over, there? Oh! over the trees. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, 
for those uh, people that don't necessarily know about Crossing Broad and stuff, I'll give you an opportunity at the end to give a little plug. Uh, if they wanted to get in touch with you or, or find out what, what the site offers, I'll leave, give you an opportunity for you to promote that. Yeah, sure. Um, so Crossing Broad's got, um, we have every, every team pretty much covered. Uh, seven for seven. <laughs> seven for seven, as we That's like to right. say, yeah. over on the main show. You want your Philly Fusion news? Yeah, we got you. Um, so there's uh, there there's a lot of good content that goes every day. Uh, that really the the guy who runs the site right now in terms of content production, Kevin Cade, who uh, started he he was a Philadelphia Union beat writer, uh, the number one Philadelphia Union beat writer for a long time. Now he's we call him the machine yeah. because. Uh, even in this quarantine, he's still getting up eight or nine different posts a day about wow. things that are somehow tangentially re related to Philly sports. It's absolutely it's bonkers. Yeah. Um, but I, I would argue that the site has some of the best, most level-headed coverage of the Sixers, Flyers, and Phillies, for sure. You don't really need anybody to cover the Eagles because there are like 90 people down there with credentials right. who all say the same thing and yeah, all tweet right. the same thing. and. <laughs> It's, it's amazing <laughs> at practice. But, it's like incomplete pass. Carson Wentz, you see it. Going yeah, it's like the Twitter feed. Wentz, incomplete, yeah. incomplete. It's like, <laughs> all right, well, I don't know. Who, who does this benefit, really? Yeah, um, <laughs> but I, I would encourage people to go over there because there's uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff that, that gets put out there. And I think we really um, do a really good job when the seasons are going on of, of also doing the sidebar pieces and, and usually about lesser known players who you wouldn't otherwise think to spend your time Right. you know, hearing from, which I think is, is really cool. We like to kind of focus a little bit more on the human element of, uh, of sports because that so often gets kind of thrown by the side. And uh, yeah. I'd encourage people to go listen to the podcasts because definitely we're all sitting around. That's you know? right. <laughs> so, and you guys can uh, follow them because they, they go live too. So you can watch them on Facebook yeah, we've, or whatever platform. We, you, you yeah, we've, we've been doing uh, live streaming on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube Live. So uh, I would encourage people to go follow those shows and I'll selfishly plug Snow the Goalie and yep. tell you that it is, in fact, the only Flyers podcast. You might think that there are other ones out there. But they're not. It's <laughs> Snow the Goalie. Uh, so we've, we've been having um, Flyers alumni on for the last few weeks. We did a top secret meeting, a top secret interview today. You said this is going to go out mid-May. I can, well, yeah. then I can say who it was. So we, we uh, to give people, I guess, a frame of reference, we did a, uh, a show with former Comcast Spectacore COO Peter Luco this morning. And oh, wow. he pulled back the curtain on a lot of things, including, if you're a Flyers fan, the trades of Mike Richards and Jeff Carter, uh, what it was like to bring Eric Lindros back into the organization for the uh, alumni game ahead of the stadium series game, uh, the Winter Classic. And wow. uh, there was a lot more in there. So we've, yeah. we've been trying to... I mean, getting the guests on and, and letting everybody kind of loosen up and it's been it's been a lot of fun so i'd encourage people to go check it out follow us over on twitter and on facebook and all that and yeah and i'll that. make sure i include the links uh with this episode so people can just click out but uh russ thank you so much for your time man this was a blast and uh i could go on for another hour with you um but uh it's getting hot in my office, actually. There's no ventilation. So. <laughs> I don't know if I'm shiny. I Get out of there! Shiny. Escape! This, this desk lamp is like radiating heat. So, uh, But anyway, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. And we will get together uh, once all of this uh, blows over because we have no excuse. We're, we, I, I've literally been walking every night that it's been sunny and I've been walking like within a block of your house. I'm like, I should just go over there, but I'm not allowed. Some people would think that's creepy. I yeah, am not yeah. one of those people. <laughs> that's right. I think that's a okay. Yeah, just uh, just for full disclosure, like I got a uh, an entertainment stand from him, so like, that's why I know. That is true. Like, <laughs> that yeah, is my, true. My kid's gaming area in the basement is provided by him and his wife, uh, so that's why I know where he lives. I didn't stalk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, you know what? This is a good point. I guess that's it's right. probably it's probably important to put out that little bit of context. Yeah, they're it? like, how does he? Yeah. Do yeah, he really is a fan. He's, of he's just going door to door. Wow, that's <laughs> yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for having me on. That was a lot of yeah, no a lot of a lot of fun. Fun to be on the other side and not conducting the interview. So that was so strange. I did it for uh, a buddy of mine, Matt Kubler. Uh, he has a podcast called Today to the Dash, and I was the guest. And I was like, oh, this is so weird because I kept apologizing for talking, and he's like, no, like you're the one that's supposed to be talking. You're the guest. Because <laughs> like, I'm yeah. so used to apologizing when I'm the host. But anyway, thank you all for listening or watching. Be sure to subscribe on any podcast app. Uh, it's in the Discover Spring Forward feed, uh, so you don't have to change. You can just stay subscribed, and uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Facebook watch 
as well so that you get notified uh, anytime we post new content. Thank you so much for listening. Until we can actually get out there and discover Spring Forward, support the businesses any way you can as we get through this together. Uh, because you know what? The Springport area has a lot of great places to live, work, eat, and explore. Yeah.